make some noise for the one and only Jason Melton! What's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for coming out again. I appreciate you guys clapping. That, uh, that's a... Uh, that's pretty awesome. And, uh, I also I also like it when people laugh too. That's a that's the second thing. Those are the two reasons I got into comedy. And uh, in stand up, you get people to clap a lot. Like I just tell people to clap and they clap. I go give it up for Paul, everybody. See, that's pretty cool. But uh, sometimes you could just say something that everybody likes and they'll clap for that too. Like, I seen that uh, one time. A guy on stage, he said, fuck vegans. And everyone was like, yeah, I hate them. Everyone started clapping in the whole room. I was like, that's pretty badass. I want to try that when I get up there. You know, like, it seems like a good comedy move. So I got on stage, I was like, let's stop human trafficking. <laughs> you, you guys are great. That night, crickets. Nobody clapped. Yeah, it was a big uh, pro-slavery crowd. <laughs> I was like, God damn, why do people always book me for this one? <laughs> That's bullshit. You guys, uh, you guys gonna get drunk tonight? It's uh, two dollar beers. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I hope you do. I don't drink anymore, so I like that when you do it. Yeah. You know, because I can't do it, so uh, you guys got to do it, and then I'll look at you and wish I was you. <laughs> like I quit drinking like uh, six years ago, and uh, yeah, I backed over some kids in my car. It was the worst. <laughs> I can't drink. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, it just really got too expensive, and now life is one long day. You know, like it's horrible being, uh, you know, <laughs> like I don't get drunk, so it's always the same. The nothing breaks it up, and I remember everything. That's that sucks. <laughs> and when I have sex, I feel all of it. <laughs> you know, like, like when I was drunk, I didn't realize it's like way wetter than you think. <laughs> and, uh, and did you know you have to clean up? Like, I, that's crazy. I just started cleaning up. Uh, the hardest part about Quinn drinking is the girl I was dating at the time, she didn't stop drinking. So uh, whenever I come home and kiss her, her kisses would taste just like my dad's, you know? Brutal. Uh, she rubber whiskers on my belly. <laughs> I like I, I started drinking really young because uh, I'm from Indiana, and uh, <laughs> I started drinking when I was like 14. Anybody start drinking like 14 or younger? Uh, like I just want the people on my level. I think don't be ashamed of it. Be proud. You gotta start drinking when you're young. You gotta pour alcohol in your brain before it it, it grows too much. You know? <laughs> like slow it down. You don't want to be like uh, Ted Kaczynski, <laughs> the Unabomber. <laughs> And me and the other 14-year-old drinkers, we don't know how to make bombs. We'll never figure that out. <laughs> We're cool. <laughs> now that you guys just started drinking normal. Can't trust you. <laughs> but yeah, I started drinking at 14. The first time I ever drank, I stole liquor from my mom right here. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm never going to fucking pay her back. <laughs> it's all mine. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> stole liquor from her, and uh, then, yeah, that's became, like, my whole life, you know, in high school, is we'd steal liquor from our parents, and then we'd drink it on a couch in the woods. And then somebody would light the couch on fire, and you'd spend the next week looking for a new couch. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the most purpose I ever had in life. <laughs> that was great. I knew what to look forward to. <laughs> And then eventually, you all their liquor is water and food coloring. So you gotta, you gotta figure out a new way. <laughs> at home with my younger brother right here. <laughs> so you gotta find a new way to get booze. And the 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 trick we used to do is we go to a liquor store and we do a hey mister. You guys know that one? You got <laughs> you wait you wait for a guy to come around the corner and you go hey mister, will you buy us booze? Uh, 
And you, is you can't just ask anybody. You have to pick the right kind of guy, you know? Like, like the, the trick is you wait for a guy, he looks like his life has completely fallen apart, you know? And that guy, that guy will buy you booze. <laughs> because when he was your age, he used to buy booze, he used to get adults to buy booze for him, you know? Like, and, and he's not gonna have a legacy, he has nothing. You know what I mean? So what he does is he buys booze for you and then you grow up to become him. <laughs> That's their way of having kids. <laughs> so we'd do that. I remember one time we got a, we had this friend named Crackhead Tommy. And uh, <laughs> his like cousin's uncle, well I think it's his uncle. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he bought us booze one time. 30 year old white guy came up on a BMX bike, you know, and he's like, he's got, <laughs> neck tattoos before everyone did. He looked like Pete Davidson, except for real, you know? <laughs> and, uh, this guy's about it. And uh, <laughs> he bought us alcohol. I still laugh about this to this day. He bought us alcohol, and then he goes, yo, if you kids tell anybody about this, I'll murk you. <laughs> Which, if you don't know, murk means murder in like 2000s hip hop. Uh, <laughs> But it makes me laugh still, because I, I always imagine a scenario where we rat him out, and then he comes back and he kills us all. <laughs> imagine having to fulfill that promise, you know? <laughs> the, the craziest one is, okay, so I had a, I grew up in Highland, Indiana. It's like, a, it's like an hour from here. <laughs> Highland, Indiana is between Hammond and Gary. So it's like the taint in between two other taints. <laughs> and, uh, and when I was growing up, Gary was the murder capital. Remember that? Yeah, it was, it was badass back then, you know, we were cool. <laughs> it felt, it's like number 10 now, total bullshit. <laughs> they need to really get back at it, you know? <laughs> get the throne once more. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so we would, uh, remember Adam McKnight? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adam McKnight, he had a moped that could go 60 miles per hour. And uh, we would ride that shit on the expressway, no helmet. <laughs> and uh, we'd go over to, uh, <laughs> he lived in a trailer next to a warehouse. You remember? Yeah, no. it's true. <laughs> he had the trailer and then his parents lived in the warehouse and then they just had a bunch of scrap metal in their yard. Uh, uh, just for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we would go there and get drunk in the trailer. And uh, we'd, hey, Mr. People in uh, the murder capital of the country. <laughs> and there was one night we walked on the expressway to this like gas station liquor store place. And we asked this guy to buy his booze. And he's like, yeah, I gotcha. And he goes in there and he comes out with a 30 pack of Bush Ice, which was our favorite beer at the time. Do you ever have Bush Ice? It's the best, yeah. It's a really good beer. It's got the ice built into it. That's why, that's why it's called Bush Ice. Uh, so uh, he comes out with a 30 pack and we're like, hell yeah, hand it over. And he's like, I'll give this to you, but uh, you know, if I just give it to you in front of the liquor store, everyone's gonna know I did something illegal. So you guys should just get my car and I'll give it to you in there. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, that's so smart, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we get in the back of his car and we're like, hand it over. And he's like, dude, if you just get out of my car with the booze, that's the same thing, right? Let me just drive you down the street a little. <laughs> Again, you're a genius. Yeah. Cool, man. I don't want to get in trouble. So he like backs out of the parking lot and he, he starts driving. I'm bumping into the FDR thing. He starts driving down the street and it gets really tense, you know, like, like me and my friend Adam are scared. It's dead silent. And he, I think he could tell because he broke the silent. He said, uh, you boys been fucking tonight? <laughs> I'm 15, you know. I'm not gonna lose my virginity for another 35 years, you know. <laughs> 
So we're like, no, sir. And he's like, oh, well, you all smell like pussy. And then he dropped us off. <laughs> and it was all fine, you know? All good. Whoever he picked up next, though, they're dead for sure, right? Like, <laughs> like what a flawless trial run. <laughs> he just drove around and found some hotter kids. <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> so rest in peace. They died so I could be here. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, so um, that's me, huh? From Indiana. <laughs> Quit drinking. It was, uh, it sucks it doing this not drunk. Uh, <laughs> it was way more fun back then being drunk. Um, but it's okay. Uh, when uh, that ex who uh, used to taste like my dad, uh, <laughs> she uh, cheated on me uh, during COVID too. That was brutal because uh, she broke two rules, you know? There's like. <laughs> You know, the, she broke the six-foot rule and that rule about not hurting me. <laughs> I'll be for real, though. I always thought she might cheat on me because she, she was way out of my league. You know, she was like a four, so. <laughs> beautiful. Very beautiful. And she cheated on me the gayest way possible, too. Uh, she had sex with a woman. <laughs> it was gay. I felt like it was really gay. I, it hurt me too. I, you know, we were together a long time and I got cheated on. So I felt like I was the victim. But because uh, we live in Chicago, so progressive, and it was Gay Pride Month, so, so everyone was just happy for her. They were like, yeah, good job. <laughs> Good job. Hey, we're so proud of you hurting that guy. Good job. <laughs> You're awesome. We're going to have a parade, ticker tape, and all that shit. Uh, good job making him cry. <laughs> so I feel like, yeah, I feel like this, whatever, though. I, learned, I don't feel bad about it anymore. I remember how I got over it is I told myself, you know, like, in this life, you, you don't always get what you want. It's not fair, you know? Like, I thought I was the victim, but who cares, you know? It, it, it's, in this life, you don't always get what you want, you know? It's the next life, she'll go to hell for her lifestyle. Then we're even. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Meanwhile, I get to go to heaven for being in the closet my whole life. Never have it. <laughs> even though I really want to, you know? It's going to be awesome when I die, too, because you go to heaven and it's whatever you want. So I can have sex with a guy up there. <laughs> That's probably what I'll do. I'll go, I'll be horny too from my whole life never having gay sex. They'll be trying to put dirt on my coffin and it'll be shaking off. My corpse will be like shaking with cum, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and then I get up to heaven, I'll like have sex with the dude for the first time in my life. It's blowing my mind. Plus, I get to look at that gay bitch down in hell, you know? Like, <laughs> that's what you get for not waiting. <laughs> That's Ezekiel 10 to 16, folks. <laughs> so it says right there in the Bible. If you don't believe me, look it up after the show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I made that all up because I hate her. Uh, <laughs> I hate her guts. She's a good person, but she was mean to me. <laughs> yeah, that was a lonely quarantine, man. You ever put on a red shirt and go to Target just to feel like you're a part of something? <laughs> like, I'll show you where the socks are. <laughs> just let me walk with you on the aisle. <laughs> the other thing that sucked during quarantine is it uh, ruined the economy, right, folks? <laughs> you guys love the economy, I know that. <laughs> That's why you're my friends. <laughs> we love the economy. <laughs> Think about the, uh, I really showed even in my neighborhood because I saw that the local karate studio closed. 
devastating, right? <laughs> yeah. Where am I going to watch five foot six guys wrestle in front of a picture window now? <laughs> There's nowhere around like that. I was also just uh, confused. But how do you even close a karate studio as a landlord, right? Like, what do you board up the place? That's a day they've all been training for. <laughs> That would be their dream come true. <laughs> They'd be right back on the mats doing somersaults. <laughs> yeah. I got a new girlfriend now. She's coming to the <laughs> She's coming to the second show. <laughs> she's cool, man. I do think she's, uh, she's making me boring, maybe. Because all we do is we... Uh, watch reality TV and look up how tall rappers are. <laughs> I, I have gotten really good at it, though. Like, you guys can name any rapper. Two chains. Take two oh. chains. All right, give me, like, five minutes. <laughs> ah, you get it. <laughs> She's cool, man. My girlfriend's black. <laughs> I didn't say that to try and win points with you. I just say it because people don't usually believe it's true. You know? uh, if people don't think I date black women on account of I look like I got my hair cut while I was fighting for the Confederacy. <laughs> like, I don't look like I chase black women. I look like I chase black women. <laughs> Around the antebellum self. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. I mean, in Chicago, it's like a, what do you call it? Interracial relationship. That always sounds so medical to me. I think it should be called race trading. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Pokemon, you know? <laughs> anyway, I think it's like, it's, Chicago is so liberal, it's never been a big issue, uh, like, for me dating black women, because uh, nobody cares. Do people will say shit, but it's like, whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, occasionally, like, obviously you think, like, a white guy will say some shit to you. But I was surprised even black guys will talk to you if you're in a racial relationship. They'll say something like, Ew, why are you taking all our women? <laughs> <laughs> Give them back to me. Uh... You guys know how black people talk. <laughs> but, yeah, we never had any real big issues. That, there was one time I, uh, I was excited to see her after work, and I was like, hey, baby, I got a big surprise for you. Uh, uh, she's like, well, I got a surprise for you, too. I looked up on the internet today, and it turns out that your family used to own slaves. <laughs> I was like, motherfucker. First of all, what if that was going to be my surprise, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I was like, well, anyway, baby. I got dreadlocks, and I took off my head. <laughs> Showed her my really cool dreadlocks. <laughs> and then she was really like, okay, I forgive you. <laughs> I was like, awesome, great. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Yeah. So, whatever. My life is great now. It used to be horrible, uh, and that was great. It worked out. Like, uh, quarantine was pretty good. We just had to kill a lot of people, and now my life is good. <laughs> I feel bad for that part, but I do. I got, like, for example, I got a new job. I got a good job for the first time in my life. I never had a good job before. I worked every, I worked every shitty job. I, I uh, you know, like, I worked, like, the job I had before this job, I worked for Sherwin-Williams. Ever heard of it? Biggest paint company in the world? Yeah, I hope you've heard of it. <laughs> Biggest paint company in the world. This is how I had to try and get women when I worked there. <laughs> Biggest paint company in the world. <laughs> I deliver paint <laughs> to construction sites. Grueling work, you know, hundreds of pounds of paint every day. The way you move up is the guy above you hurts his back. And then you <laughs> Our CEO had the strongest back in the world, actually. That's how he got there. I remember he used to crush a paint can with the spine at the company picnic. <laughs> 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 
Like, uh, I got a job now. I make an amount of money that you're not allowed to tell other people. <laughs> a lot of people here don't know. <laughs> it, once you start adding a K to the end of your salary, you can't be friends with any, like, poor people. <laughs> you can't talk about it. I figured out, I, I didn't want to talk about it, though, because I was proud, so... I figured out like a clever way to tell people how much money I make now, which is, uh, which is you know that game that straight uh, white guys play where they talk about how much money it would cost for them to suck another man's dick? <laughs> right? And it's some astronomical number because they're so straight. You know, like it would cost a lot. Uh, well, I'm getting to the point where I can afford a lot of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Good too. <laughs> and I'm gonna take them up on it because I have the money now and I realize it's not about money, it's about power. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I won't be like Jeff Bezos. I get that guy, his whole slave pro I mean space program. <laughs> I want a space program. <laughs> Yeah, you work for Amazon, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. My friend Ashley got into MIT. Ever heard of it? It's a big science school. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you might have heard of it. I don't know. It, we were all proud of her, and our uh, friend uh, Paul was like, you never know who there is going to be the next Bill Gates, so you should just, like, blow everybody, you know? <laughs> Get in with the next Bill Gates. I thought it was pretty rude, you know? Because it, it discounts the idea that she might be the next Bill Gates, right? And then what's the consequence of that? Like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, I went to school with Bill Gates. He blew everybody. <laughs> everybody there. I remember one night, yeah, it was me, Bill Gates, and uh, Mark Zuckerberg was just in the corner watching. <laughs> that guy's pretty cool. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to smoothly talk about other stuff. Uh, <laughs> my friend uh, Dan came out of the closet. That's pretty cool for him. Uh, he came out. He's not binary now, but he, for a while he just came out of the closet. And uh, I was really happy for him because I've been telling everybody for months that he was gay. <laughs> so it was cool that I was right, you know. <laughs> You can't be bullying somebody if you're telling them to be themselves. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm proud of him. I remember when I, I grew up in Indiana, that it was more confusing than now. Because everybody was gay and nobody was gay. You know, because you'd say to everybody, you'd say, you're gay. And they'd say, no, I'm not. I'm like, who the fuck is gay? <laughs> it's a paradox, you know? <laughs> but even worse than that, sometimes you call someone gay and they'd be like, well, yeah, actually, I am gay. Because gay means happy. <laughs> and, and I'm pretty happy right now. And I, I'll get really angry because... I don't think happy, I don't think gay means happy. Like, I don't think you use that. Unless you're like a poet in the 1800s, you could say gay is happy. But if you're, if you're a poet in the 1800s, you are gay. <laughs> like, uh, what are you writing for? There's a bubonic plague, you know? Like, take care of your family. <laughs> but yeah, I was also like, think about it like practically, like nowadays, you can't, you can't use gay as happy in a sentence. Like, you can't be like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to go to Jason's album recording. It's going to be a gay time. <laughs> can't wait to see that guy Jason on stage. He always gives me gay thoughts. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. So we all know gay only means two things, right? It means um, homosexual and bad. <laughs> yeah, you know, like like if a movie sucked or something. You go, that movie's gay. <laughs> Everyone knows what you mean. <laughs> Sweet. 
Someone tried to say I was gay just because I said uh, trans women are objectively attractive. And uh, I didn't think it was like a sexuality thing. I think it's just true. I think it's objectively true. Because I, uh, I did the math on it. Like, uh, like, uh, and I think I compared in my head what's more attractive, uh, like aesthetically. That's the word. <laughs> what's more attractive, female body or male body? And to me, it's the female body. Like, it's, it's like softer and curvy, and the guy body is all hard and lines and hair. <laughs> it's not as good. And then I thought objectively about genitalia, like a penis or a vagina. And aesthetically, if I'm being 100% honest, it's the penis is better. <laughs> it just is. Think it's, it's like proud of itself, you know? Like, it's happy. <laughs> it's smooth and aerodynamic, you know? Like, it's got that skin. It's like soft and hard. And it's like your nephew's forehead skin. And, uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, what's a vagina look like? That's gross, you know? Like, it's gross looking. It's all it's vaguely wet. <laughs> Slimy. To me, to me, a vagina, it just looks like a penis that dove on a grenade to protect the balls. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why trans women are most attractive, because if you got a female body and penis. <laughs> and then you have cis men and women in the middle, and trans women, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gotta edit that out, I think. <laughs> But it's true. But anyway. no, do I just have these jokes? They don't really fit anywhere. So I, I'll do some of these. <laughs> hey, you ever notice when somebody says that their baby is a, a gift from God, they just don't want to say who the real dad is? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's from God? Because it looks like Fred from the tire store. So I think it's from Fred. See what I mean? <laughs> you guys uh, uh, have pubic hair? <laughs> yeah. I think uh, people nowadays, they're, they're telling you what to do with your pubes too much. You know what I mean? Like, you, you should get whatever you want, you know? Like, like, uh, like feminists, they're like, grow out all your hair and your pubes. And uh, some people say, cut off all your pubes. Like, Jerry at the gas station tells me that. And, uh, <laughs> I think you should just pick what you like, you know? Like, whatever makes you feel confident and stuff, you know? Like, I got a landing strip for mine. That's my... That was my choice. It starts with my upper back hair and goes all the way down. And down. That's the move, too. Like, yeah, because you can get a flag guy to bring your girl in on your back. <laughs> Because if you get your girl to land on your back and she comes on your back, that's equality. That's, uh, you know, everybody, that's real feminism. Is when a girl comes on your back. That's what I want you to remember from this. <laughs> That'll be the most important point. My life used to be bad, you know? And I, uh, you guys ever get uh, uh, depressed and sad and shit? Yeah. yeah! I used to, it turns out um, you could cure it just by making a lot more money. <laughs> you should try that. <laughs> But I used to, uh, yeah, I used to get depressed and try, I tried everything too, you know, like, uh, like, uh, you know, like, uh, I tried, uh, retail therapy, ever try that? <laughs> Not bad. I'd say three out of five stars. It's like, you go to a Target and, uh, you buy a three pack of cutting boards, even though you have no food. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, I got some leftover soy sauce, I guess I'll chop it up, I don't know. <laughs> Shopping is fun. <laughs> I tried, uh, I tried, uh, 
uh, exercise, that was the worst one. Because <laughs> you have to exercise. <laughs> so I didn't work either. <laughs> the most interesting thing I try is my friend Billy told me if I stop jacking off, that would help my depression. And I was like nervous to try it because uh, since I started, I'd never stopped. <laughs> I'd never taken a break. And I did it for like, I did it for three weeks straight. It was really interesting. It was like, it was probably the most uh, horny uh, depression I've ever gone through. <laughs> I was like, I was staring into the void like, I see a boob in there. <laughs> the void looks like a boob right now. If you squint. It got so, I, it got so bad I tried to kill myself once. Yeah. Nobody likes when you talk about it. Usually, usually I just tell people I had a near-death experience. <laughs> so no one knows. I had a near-death experience with a lot of pills. And uh, they, 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 they fell on me. And <laughs> they all landed in my mouth. <laughs> and I accidentally swallowed them. <laughs> and uh, what I learned from it is um, if you're going to kill yourself, go for it. And uh, no. <laughs> I mean, you learn a lot. You learn about how much people love you. <laughs> I would say this at least. If you're going to kill yourself, do not do it with pills. I think that's a bad method. Because as soon as you take all the pills, there's like a 20 minute downtime. <laughs> where you're like, uh, what now? Like I got like 20 minutes. Like, what do I try on hats? You know? <laughs> on the ground <laughs> too late to start a puzzle <laughs> you guys are uh, political <laughs> you guys got to vote right you guys well I didn't vote voting just happened uh, I never uh, vote because the last time I voted the uh, the guy totally screwed me over um, he didn't do anything I said. In fact, he went and orchestrated 9-11. <laughs> you can't trust these guys. Let me tell you, never vote for Muhammad Atta. <laughs> he screwed me over. I never vote. We had Mike Pence, that, the guy. He was like our... He's from Indiana, you know? So I knew Mike Pence back in the day in Indiana... One of his big things is he was uh, pro uh, electrotherapy for gay people. So you, uh, yeah. Our vice president thought you could electrocute gay people to make them straight, which was, I, I think, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. What are you going to electrocute gay people to make them straight? That doesn't make any sense. If you know anything about electrocution, it doesn't make you straight. It makes you all zigzag. <laughs> so that's not going to work. <laughs> You gotta try something like a uh, deep shame. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, fuck Mike Pence. The other guy, you know, I don't. The thing I never could get into with politics is I feel like people judge too much based on uh, their personal lives. You know, they're like, oh, I don't know if he's moral. He's a Roman Catholic, and I'm a Protestant. It's like, who gives a fuck, you know? <laughs> People care if you're, like, married or not. Uh, that stuff is so dumb because all they do is they go in the Senate and then they... Um uh, destroy people in other countries and kill them and <laughs> economically starve a whole country and kill everybody. So who gives a fuck if they're Roman Catholic, you know? <laughs> they don't care. There was a guy, Roy Moore. You remember Roy Moore? He ran for Senate in Alabama. And uh, the, thing to the thing everyone remembers about him, if you know him, is he was a pedophile. It was like no one. He, <laughs> he's a pedophile. And uh, people are like, don't vote for him. He's a pedophile. And it's like, who cares, you know? 
He's going. <laughs> He's going into the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> hey, you know what? Maybe he'll drone strike a few less kids because he thinks they're hot. So, thumbs up. <laughs> Go Roy Moore. It's funny as he, he, he beat a guy named Doug Jones. Or Doug Jones beat him by 1%. And uh, I always thought that was funny because uh, despite what I said... Uh, <laughs> they were like, he's only 1% better than this pedophile. <laughs> Which sucks for that guy. <laughs> you want to be more than that. <laughs> anyway, um, so what's good in life? Uh, I'll tell you what it is. It's, pro it's professional wrestling. <laughs> yeah! 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 Yes! It's the greatest thing ever. My favorite guy used to be Hulk Hogan, but he got canceled. That sucked. You guys know Hulk Hogan got canceled? People forgot, but I remember. He came out with his sex tape, which was cool at first. And, uh, <laughs> and then in the sex tape, he said the N-word a bunch of times, which is awful. It's horribly racist and not in the moment during sex at all. <laughs> brother <laughs> he's not mad about Hulk Hogan <laughs> Hulk Hogan big racist can you guys believe it this guy says brother every other sentence he doesn't even like them and, uh, I could have I was so angry you know I was like I can't believe this rich white guy from Florida doesn't like black people what's going on <laughs> he's got a ponytail how can he not like them <laughs> I got so angry at Hulk Hogan I was wearing a Hulk Hogan shirt and I ripped it off <laughs> <laughs> fuck Hulk Hogan I like John Cena now that's my guy John Cena Woo! you ever heard of him yeah, yeah. can't see him John Cena is the best wrestler ever because he's as good a wrestler as Hulk Hogan, maybe, and uh, he's also a good person. That's the important part, right? Like, he's not a racist. And I think he's a really good person because he has the Make-A-Wish Foundation world record, which is yeah. awesome. Woo. Yeah, he's got like over 700 Make-A-Wishes and, uh, and counting. And then in the wrestling arena, he has the most devastating finishing move of any wrestler that I've seen. <laughs> what he does, he takes a picture with you, and then he pats you on the head. And then over the next few uh, months, you wither and die. Kids, which I think is unfair. <laughs> hey, Chicago PD. What the fuck Everybody, is going on? Everybody stay calm. What? <laughs> Who, did somebody call the fucking cops? We've had reports of uh, somebody murdering. Is somebody murdering here? <laughs> I'm not that fat. Oh there no, he he's, he's he's they 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 <laughs> Come on, you're coming with us. You're under arrest. Oh no. You're getting booked. Oh. I, no. <laughs> you're getting, you're getting <laughs> happened the police just came in here that's a it's illegal to dress up as a police officer <laughs> the tamale guy came through you guys see the tamale guy? I like it 
I like you with the, the tamale guys, like the. Oh my god. Wait, it's. Wait, hold on. It's. What the fuck? One more joke. Uh, uh, they're cool. They let me go. Um, uh, uh, I grew up uh, half black and half Asian. Uh, and that's why I got uh, one really big dick and one really small one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. Woo! You guys are awesome. Thank you for coming. Woo! Give up for Jason Melton, everybody.